All right, this is AP AB Calculus. We are doing the midterm review. Uh, this is free response 21B, which is a non-calculated free response. So we're asked to use the K and P that we found in part A. So I'm just going to go ahead and cheat and copy those from our part A. In part A, we found that K was negative 2 and P was a 2, meaning that this expression, instead of being this now, is X squared minus 2X plus 2. So we're asked for this piecewise function, right, with the new p and k, on what intervals is f increasing? So my job, right, um, so my job is to start with the ask, which is when is f increasing, right, and, uh, and then say, okay, what is the definition of that? Well, f increasing means that f prime is greater than zero. So I'm now going to have to look at f prime, right? So, so, I, so I clearly need f prime, right? Now we've already found uh, f prime in a previous, uh, in part a, but we found it with the k's and the p's. We might as well go ahead and find our derivative now. And we do now know that this is differentiable because remember in part a, uh, we were required to find k and p that make f of x differentiable. So we know that we can use these equal to's here, right? So we know f of x uh, is differentiable at one. So when I differentiate, I get two minus two x, for x values uh, less than uh, or equal to 1, because I can say equal to now because I know that it's differentiable. And when I differentiate the second one, I get 2x minus 2 for x values that are greater than 1. So the trick is that for f to be increasing, I basically have to consider these two things separately. Okay, so, so um, f prime of x uh, left of 1, right, where x is less than or equal to 1, I would need my f prime to be greater than zero because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for f prime is greater than zero. Well, if I solve this, negative 2x is greater than negative 2, x is less than 1. Well, these are the same same basic interval, right? Like this is saying x is less than uh, x is less than or equal to negative 1, and this is saying x is less than 1. So essentially, uh, if I want both of these to be true, right, like they, they both have to be true together, then I could say that this answer the overlap in this answer is everywhere except for that close point at 1, right? So basically, uh, the answer to, to this half is x is less than 1, right? If I then do the other half, if I say, okay, well, what's, what's happening on the other side, right? I need this side. Well, for f prime of x uh, right of 1, I know that x is greater than 1, and I want 2x minus 2 to be greater than 0. So that's 2x is greater than 2, which is x is greater than 1. Well, these are, are literally the same uh, exact inequality, so I don't even have to graph them. This, this side is true for x is greater than 1. So then the question is, what about at 1, right? Well, we know that f prime of x is continuous because we already saw that the left limit was equal to the right limit. Right, and and we know that so so the only reason we weren't able to have this equal to in part a is because in part a we weren't sure uh, if the function was differentiable. Right, we had to show that it's differentiable, and and here we're we're now that we know that this is di differentiable, this has to actually equal f prime of one. So once we know it's differentiable, then it has to be continuous, which means that if if f prime is positive on this interval and it's positive on this interval, and it's continuous, it can't magically not be positive in between. So f prime of x uh, is greater than 0 for all x. The other way to write that is negative infinity to infinity. Right? So the trick here is that you really do have to consider both sides. It just happens that in this instance, the tricky answer is that it's all x values, and that feels sort of anticlimactic because we're hoping we find an interval where this function is increasing, but it turns out the function is always increasing, which is not uh, super exciting, but it is what it is.